even in this genre, it's possible to find inspiring moments for female empowerment. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 feminist moments in rom-coms. For this list, we're looking at the most empowering moments in some of our favorite romantic comedies. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. My life's been trouble. Number 10. Rachel's Standing Up to Eleanor – Crazy Rich Asians Rachel Chu is introduced as a clever economics professor with a solid poker face, but she's dealt a rough hand in Crazy Rich Asians. It can be hard meeting your boyfriend's family for the first time, especially if he neglected to mention they are super rich and protective of their customs and status. From Rachel and Eleanor's first interaction, it's clear there are philosophical differences between them. Pursuing one's passion. How American. Well. Your mother is very open-minded, not like here, where parents are obsessed with shaping the life of the children. When it seems like Nick has to choose between her or his family, Rachel makes the choice for him and proves her worth to both herself and the disapproving Eleanor in a game of Mahjong. I'm not leaving because I'm scared or because I think I'm not enough. Because maybe for the first time in my life, I know I am. Though it could be easy to think of Eleanor as the villain, she's simply one of the strong women in the film protecting values close to them. A poor, raised by a single mother, low-class immigrant, nobody. Number 9. Cat Giving Bianca Advice 10 Things I Hate About You I'm not hostile. I'm annoyed. Why don't you try being nice? Kat from 10 Things I Hate About You is one of the few characters in popular rom-coms from the 90s who is an overt feminist. In fact, it's something that's used against her in the film, as she's often made to seem man-hating and, for lack of a better word, shrewish. You forget I don't care what people think. In many ways, this isn't a feminist film, with lots of aspects that seem problematic in retrospect, but what redeems it is Kat herself. Because beyond her tough exterior, she really does have the interests of women at heart. In one memorable moment, she reminds her sister to stay true to herself and that she doesn't always need to live up to the expectations of others. You don't always have to be who they want you to be, you know. Number 8. Tula Getting an Education – My Big Fat Greek Wedding If you want, I could go to college and um, take a few courses. The entire premise of My Big Fat Greek Wedding hinges on Tula's overprotective Greek family, who treats her like she doesn't have any agency despite her being a grown and accomplished woman. Why do you want to leave me? I'm not leaving you. Don't you want me to do something with my life? Near the beginning of the story, she makes the decision to go to college even though it's patently against what her father wants for her. Throughout the whole movie, she works hard to assert her independence, while still respecting their wishes and traditions. In fact, the film does a great job of showing how you can carve out your own path while still showing your love for your family. You're interesting and you're beautiful and fun and you got a weird family, who doesn't? Number 7. Torrance Dumping Aaron – Bring It On You were too busy to believe in me. Oh, no, 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 but wait. You weren't too busy to sell me out to Courtney and Whitney, were you? For Torrance Shipman from Bring It On, her relationship with her older boyfriend Aaron isn't exactly what her world revolves around. She clearly spends much more time thinking about cheerleading. But the audience is aware from early on that he is obviously not worthy of her affections, and it all comes to a head when Aaron tells Torrance that he doesn't think she's captain material. You're a great cheerleader, Tor, and you're cute as hell. It's just that maybe... Maybe... You're just not captain material. Torrance ends up asserting herself when she goes to visit Aaron at his college dorm and tells him just how little she cares about him, and in turn, their relationship. You're a great cheerleader, Aaron. It's just that maybe you're not exactly boyfriend material. Bye bye Number 6. Jane saying no to Jake. It's complicated. <laughs> oh, gosh! All right. Yeah, I'm fine. It's Complicated was written and directed by the prolific Nancy Myers, so it's no surprise that it features a strong female character. While early in the film, Jane succumbs to a relationship with her ex-husband, who clearly did not treat her well, as time goes on, she gains the confidence to actually do what's right for her. Hello, stranger. 
Welcome back. Now that she finds herself in the position of being the other woman, she's forced to contend with what she truly wants. In the end, even though it would be easy to get back together with her ex, she stands her ground and finally moves on from what was clearly a toxic relationship. We blew it the first time around. This time we just should have known better. Number five, Jess playing football. Bend it like Beckham. I played in the final today and we won. How? When? I wasn't going to go, but dad let me. And it was brilliant. I played the best ever. In Bend It Like Beckham, Jasminder Jess Bamra comes from a traditional and very conservative Indian family who thinks that her desire to play football, aka soccer, isn't befitting of a girl. Her mother tries to get her to take up different interests, but Jess knows what she really wants. And if I can't tell you what I want now, then I'll never be happy whatever I do. She ends up rebelling against her family to go after her dreams, even getting a scholarship to an American school because of her prowess on the field. Though she has a hard time being honest with them, in the end it pays off because she's able to live the life she'd always imagined. And phone Papu Uncle in Canada as soon as you land. At least there's some family close by. Number four, Iris's speech to Jasper, the holiday. You have never treated me right, ever. Oh, babe. Shush! You broke my heart. You acted like somehow it was my fault. When we first meet Iris, played by Kate Winslet in the Christmas movie The Holiday, she's a sad woman learning that the man she's been in love with for ages is getting engaged to another woman. Throughout the story, he continues to string her on, keeping her on the hook, despite obviously not having any intention of giving her what she wants. By the time the story is about to wrap up, though, Iris has learned a thing or two about gumption and serves Jasper a speech telling him to get out of her life. We cannot watch this scene without being inspired. It's over. This, this, this twisted, toxic thing between us is finally finished. Number three, Bridget quitting. Bridget Jones's diary. Bridget, come on, Ed. I mean, I know it's been awkward as ass, but there's, there's no need to leave. No, actually there is. The audience knew it was a bad idea for Bridget to get involved with her boss, Daniel Cleaver, who was obviously a total cad from the start. Their totally inappropriate workplace flirtation is hard to witness a couple of decades after the film was released. But after being treated pretty abysmally by him, Bridget finally gets it together and quits her job, leaving Daniel in the dust. You were expected to give at least six weeks' notice. Ah, yes, well, you know, I thought with the company being in so much trouble and all, you wouldn't really miss the person who waltzes in in a see-through top and fannies about with the press releases. Now, we don't think she should have had to leave her workplace because of the way he treated her, but considering she did have another job lined up, it probably was for the best to get out of there. But if staying here means working within... 10 yards of you. Frankly, I'd rather have a job wiping Saddam Hussein's ass. Number two, Sally saying she's not a consolation prize. When Harry met Sally. Are you seeing anybody? Harry. What? I don't want to talk about this. Why not? I don't want to talk about it. There are a lot of troubling things going on when you look back at When Harry Met Sally, which was released in 1989. It's more and more clear that Harry treated Sally badly, especially after he emotionally detached from her after they slept together, despite how close they'd previously been. Why can't we get past this? I mean, are we gonna carry this thing around forever? Forever? It just happened. It happened three weeks ago. She stands up for herself and calls him out on his behavior. When Harry tries to come crawling back to her with apologies, Sally makes sure he knows that she doesn't want to be a consolation prize just because he can't find anyone else. Of course, they do end up together, but Sally made sure it was under the terms she wanted. It doesn't work this way. Well, how does it work? I don't know, but not this way. It's very important to me when people, real or imaginary, stand up for themselves and know their worth. So these are great movie moments as far as I'm concerned. Our number one is actually a bit more far-reaching than just one single moment, but I don't want to give too much away, so let's cheer our way through these honorable mentions, and then we'll crown our top feminist moment in a rom-com. Donna's friend sets her straight. Obvious child. Stop it with the crazy jokes. Why do you care what he needs to know or not? You are the one who has to get this procedure. Lara Jean staying true to herself. She doesn't change despite her popular boyfriend. To all the boys I've loved before. I'd always fantasized about falling in love in a field, but I just never thought it'd be the kind where you played lacrosse. Cher isn't going to rush into anything. She's going to wait until it's the right person. Clueless. Cher, you're a virgin? God, you say that it's a bad thing. Besides, the PC term is hymenally challenged. I am just not interested in doing it until I find the right person. 
But you see how picky I am about my shoes, and they only go on my feet. Viola going undercover. She dresses as a boy to play soccer. She's the man. Wait, are you sure I can do this? Oh yeah, absolutely. What's up? Frances buys a villa. She decides to change her life after her divorce, under the Tuscan sun. That's what I can pay. Fiona, um, you've not even seen the house. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the whole movie, Legally Blonde. I'm going to Harvard. We know, we know, we're supposed to pick a specific moment, but how could you possibly choose from all the great scenes in Legally Blonde? I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. I object. At first, Elle Woods is wholly committed to getting her boyfriend Warner back after he dumps her because she isn't serious enough. To prove her worth, she manages to get into Harvard Law School. But her goals soon shift, and getting the guy is no longer what's driving her because she becomes passionate about succeeding in her own right. If you're going to let one stupid prick ruin your life, you're not the girl I thought you were. Not only that, but she actually befriends the girl who Warner is currently dating, rather than letting them be pit against each other. In the end, Warner certainly does not come out on top. I've waited so long to hear you say that. <sighs> but if I'm going to be a partner in a law firm by the time I'm 30, I need a boyfriend who's not such a complete bonehead. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.